Good morning. It's Friday, April 30th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, The Burden of Pride, and our scripture is Acts chapter 8. A man named Simon had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone, from the least to the greatest, often spoke of him as the Great One, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with his magic. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you your evil thoughts. For I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible things you've said won't happen to me. Simon, the magician, as he was called, was a very perceptive fellow. Most magicians are. Their so-called magic is a means of deception to distract the audience's eyes with the right hand so the left can make stuff appear or change or disappear. But perception is only in the eyes of the beholder, the audience. Reality is in God's hands. And Simon was smart enough to perceive something greater than his sham performances. He saw people turning to God and understood he was witnessing something much greater than himself. So, as Acts tells us, he also believed, was baptized, and began following to see where it would lead. When he witnessed the gift of the Holy Spirit being imparted to people and the change that came over them, The old Simon within recognized a great opportunity to regain his status, and that old Simon tried to buy his way back into the limelight. Aren't the names significant here? It was Peter who told Simon his heart wasn't right, so his request would wash back the dregs of hell all over it. Simon was being instructed by Peter, an apostle who used to be Simon until Jesus renamed him Peter. Now Peter, Christ's little rock, was telling Simon, the disingenuous huckster, to get his heart straight before he'd see any blessing from above. The short answer to the riddle of this account is that Simon the magician couldn't let go of the old life, and because of that, he would not experience the joy and liberation of the new life in Jesus. His jealous desire to be in the spotlight made him a captive to his sinful nature. The Apostle Paul fought this as well. Listen to his testimony in Romans chapter 7. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It's sin living in me that does it. I've discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there's another power within me that's at war with my mind. 
This power makes me a slave to the sin that's still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that's dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is? In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. For you today, if this Simon in the Spotlight battle is raging within you, go back and read aloud how Paul found Christ's solution until the Holy Spirit starts to burn it within your heart that you won't be able to do it alone. And when the burden of self becomes great enough, you'll know what to do. Lay it down, right at the foot of the cross. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.